remembers the 34,000 South Koreans who fell in the last year of the war with a memorial ceremony led by President Syngman Rhee. He is joined by his allies with General Maxwell Taylor, commander of the 8th Army, offering a silent prayer. A courageous leader joins his people in their mourning. The sound of guns has been stilled in Korea, but the scars of bereavement are written on the faces of the citizens of a ravaged land. Few indeed are the families of that tragic country who have not felt the cruel hand of war and the loss of a loved one. Here is the roster of the widows and fatherless babies, and in their mourning ceremony they symbolize the personal tragedy of a people whose country has been a world battleground. Here are people who not only have known the tragedy of war, but whose spiritual scars will take long to heal. The Falcon Dam on the Rio Grande River provides yet another link between the United States and Mexico. President Eisenhower arrives for the dedication to be greeted by President Ruiz Cortinas of Mexico, with whom he visited on the Mexican side, the first time he has set foot out of the country since his election. The two chiefs of state then join in the unveiling of the dedication plaques on the $47 million dam, which will provide irrigation and power to be divided equally between the two nations. Truly hands across the border and another bond between two close neighbors. New York accords its traditional hero's welcome with a cloud of ticker tape to General Mark Clark, retiring commander-in-chief of the Far East. After 40 years of service, General Clark leaves the army with the acclaim of his countrymen, 300,000 of whom jam the streets to do him homage. He closes his military career with the warning that America may never relax her defense against communism. At Edwards Air Force Base, test pilot George Welch puts our newest jet fighter, the F-100 Super Sabre, through its paces. The successor to the Korean-tested F-86 Sabre jet is bigger, more powerful by far the first operational jet to exceed the speed of sound in level flight. In other words, it's in production and it is supersonic. When it cracked the sound barrier, shock waves broke windows down below. Super Sabre. Engineering history in the making as construction crews race a December 1st deadline to complete the world's longest pipeline, spanning almost 2,000 miles from Alberta oil fields to refineries in Ontario. The final links are pushed through, overcoming enormous natural obstacles. Four miles of 20-inch pipe must be towed across the Straits of Mackinac in northern Michigan, underwater. Pontoons hold the pipe just off the bottom, keeping the waterway free for shipping as the prodigious task goes forward to completion. Royalty visits Paris. King Paul and Queen Frederica pause in their journey to the United States. For the Queen, it's a reunion with her two brothers, Heinrich and Christian, of the House of Hanover. The brothers are among the friends and relations, most of them members of Europe's exiled nobility, who pay their respects to the royal couple before their departure. Despite his disclaimer that he is not a hero, General William Dean receives a hero's welcome from his Commander-in-Chief, President Eisenhower. The general, who has rapidly recovered from his three years of red captivity, is in Washington for a new assignment. The latest range at Palo Alto is the bongo board, kind of a sawed-off seesaw for one Marjorie Daw at a time. It's easy enough to see how it works, but it's quite a trick to make it work. Models, or just anybody interested in keeping in shape, find that by using bongo, bingo. Everything shapes up nicely. You don't have to be good at figures to figure that out. Yes, sir, the gals are falling for bongo in a big way. Well, fancy meeting you here, girls. Here being the ancient ruins of Austria, 17 miles from Rome, a scenic spot for a fashion show, including silly hats. This one decorated with chestnuts. And this one is a shoe hat. If prizes were being given, it would be a shoe in to win. But enough is enough. Melini's winter wardrobe is the big thing here at the old Roman ruins, where Julius Caesar and others vacationed on the Mediterranean. 
It's a far cry to cocktail dresses and evening gowns designed by modern-day Romans for lovely ladies of a world a lot larger than Caesar ever imagined it. Ruins 2,000 years old, what a contrast to winter fashions of A.D. 1953. Evening gowns in blacks and whites, plus new fabrics and new lines, all featured at this outdoor showing. Well, so long, girls. I gotta be Roman along. This is what you might call a squirrely story. Meet Miss Florence Hinton of Grover City, California, who has trained a small platoon of the bushy-tailed little rodents into amiability and a desire to please. Snookums here is a motherly little old lady squirrel with quite a talent for babysitting. A very affectionate type squirrel is Snookums. Jumbo is another member of the pet family, claimed to be the only performing trained squirrels in the world. But Jumbo seems to be ad-libbing his routine. The straight and narrow is not for Jumbo, but it's only innocent mischief. This patriotic little fella earned his name, Sousa. It's the stars and stripes forever for him.